Hello beautiful nerdy stitchers. This is Mev uh, back for a video update after another five weeks since my last. Today is November 4th. It's a beautiful Sunday morning here in Paris and um, I've got a lot to show and talk about um, so this might be a little bit long. Uh, I will most probably not include this um, the word section, although there will be some tangents probably in my st stitchy um, musings um, relative to words. So welcome, welcome back. Um, thank you very much for being here. Um, it has allowed me to do, accomplish, finish, fully finish so many things in the past five weeks. Um, that I really do need to thank you from the bottom of my heart. Um, I would like to acknowledge um, the new people that have been willing to um, figure on my, the other way, on my world map of stitchers. Um, this um, little corkboard um, world map uh, is now being filled in by little pins as you can see and on each pin I have one or several initial for all the stitchers out there that have kindly um, commented on my video and say hey this is um, Marie and I live in Paris France um, I now have close to 70 names um, this is just incredible and I would like to say hi to the um, to the latest editions. Um, there's um, there's Frosty X Stitch from Basel in Switzerland. Um, she says how she feels a little bit um, lonely in her stitchy corner of the world. Um, so, you know, share on Instagram and on YouTube maybe so that you don't feel that alone. I mean, I stitch alone in my place, but I definitely feel like I'm surrounded by um, beautiful people, so that's a really, really nice thing. Um, there's um, there's Debbie in uh, Durban, South Africa. This got me really excited because it is the actual first, where is it? First pin, oh, this is so bad, in, Af in the African, on the African continent. So Debbie, Thank you very much for commenting. Um, I'm very, very happy to have uh, somebody living so far away on the African continent. Um, that means a lot to me. Um, there's Teal Elder in Richmond, Indiana. There's Betty, Betty Yulin, who's been following me from, I think, the first video. She's in Paris, Texas, obviously. We're connected. Um, there's Cindy in Lafarge, Wisconsin. And uh, last but not least, there's Carol in uh, Kansas. So thank you all um, for joining in. And I need to extend my apologies to Scott in Barcelona. Obviously, silly, idiot, idiotic um, prejudice. I, um, because I didn't know the uh, first name of the stitcher, I, um, I thought it was a lady, but Scott is definitely a guy. And so... Scott, um, thank you for reaching out to me on Instagram to correct my mistake. I'm really sorry. And so Scott is in Barcelona, Spain. Um, so this is for the uh, map of stitchers. Um, I really like the way it's uh, just filling in little by little. If you want to, you know, just be featured on, on this and that I, so that I can think of all the people around that are having the same passion for stitches please do reach out in the comment and just tell me um, maybe your name, your first name, or your um, um, your nickname and where you are, whether it be a city, a region, an area, whatever, around the world. Um, so that was for the uh, world map of stitchers. Um, I want to um, say a very special thank you to the beautiful Leah Aviatrix Stitcher. She sent me some very, very, very happy mail, which will enable me to jump in the fully finishes that I have um, for this video. Um, Leah has sent me a little envelope full, full of 
treasures. I mean, I cannot begin to express how special all of the items that I've received are for me. Um, the first of which is a beautiful little card about friendship, and obviously this resonates on so many levels. Good friends are like stars, you can't always see, see them, but you know they're there. This is just <laughs> so very true. Um, and together with this card, all right, so wait for this. Um, I'll show you the very last item on one of my um, works in progress. She sent me those scissors. I mean, look at the size of those scissors. I haven't never ever seen such tiny scissors. They're so beautiful and so useful. I have them with me all the time. And she also got me at the Minnesota Fair this lovely little thing, Chinese thing, with obviously a dragon, which is so right for me. And you'll understand why in a minute, so that I have them with me. And what I did at my mom's last weekend in order for them to travel safely, I asked my mom to um, make me a little scissors. Okay, so that one, that, that one's interesting. Um, there's only one word in French for what I'm going to show you. And when I looked at the word, I needed to know exactly what the English word was. I was like confounded because for what I wanted to say, there are like three or four or five words. So this is what she did. A tiny little leather. This is the softest veal leather in the world from her stash. I mean, she's got a box full of scraps of leather. So of course she can do this in five minutes. So this is how it goes. And it, it's got a, uh, how do you call it, a snap fastening at the top. So there it is. So this is a little scissors case, sheath, holster, pouch, whatever you want to call it. Anyway, it protects my scissors and the things that are with them when I travel, and I love it. Um, and so Leah, you know how I love this. So these are the little tiny scissors with a scissors fob, which is just perfect. I have them with me all the time. And together with those scissors and the fob and the card, she sent me a delightful little pattern from Kathy Haberman at Hands On Design, which is called Winter Time. And she said that she thought it would remind me of my time in Massachusetts when I was a little girl. And she was just spot on, especially because this is when my mom started quilting. So, I mean, this was just perfect. And of course, I had to begin, I had to start it right away. And this is, as you can see, intended to be finished as a small pillow. However, when I saw the pattern and its shape, I thought, hmm, there's something I need that I don't have. And I think this pattern would be perfect for it. And so I made a little needle book out of it. So this is the pattern, the stitched design. So it's either this way or obviously that way because obviously I made a book out of it. Well, with the help of my mom, obviously, because she not only does she have a wall full of fabric in boxes, she's got felt, she's got leather, she's got everything, anything you need relative to um, textile or fiber art. She has it. It's just crazy. And so this is the little book with my needles in it. And I think the colors that we found in her stash were just perfect. And so here it is. And the, um, the pattern came with those tiny little brass bells, which is just perfect um, to close the needle book. So this is it when it's closed. I'll show you the other side. Isn't it sweet? I <laughs> just love everything about it. I converted, um, I think, all of the colors. I just went in. Oh, by the way, I want to show you this. Can you see this color here? It's only one DMC, actually, that goes from dark 
blue to a lighter blue to a light brown to a darker brown. So this is only one color. I don't have it with me. I'll put it in the description box. It's, so it's a DMC um, six strand cotton floss. And you see I've used it here. And I think with the other colors it just goes perfectly. So this is Winter Time by Hands On Design. Leah and Kathy, thank you so very much. I love this and it just just so perfect to um to do a little needle book with it. So this is my first fully finished object for this video. Now so Leah again, I mean you know um how touched um, I was for all those things. And as, as, as you mentioned, it is so true that having everyday little useful stuff um, coming from friends is so very precious. I mean, each time I you know, pick up my scissors, I think of you, and, and I think it's just wonderful. So thank you so very much. Now, the other fully finished object which is a little bit bigger that you may have seen on Instagram um, I had finished a present <clears throat> sorry for my sister by Needle Work Press I showed that to you in my last video now it had to be fully finished as it happens my um, youngest sister's birthday is tomorrow November 5th and I'm lucky enough that she will be visiting me in, um, in two weeks time so 10 days even so it's finished and it's ready to um, to be gifted to her. And so this is what we did with my crazy genius aunt. I hope the glare is not going to be too bad. Those of you who follow me on Instagram would have seen this already. This is a present for my sister, fully finished with acrylic. Um, Thing instead of glass. So let me try and explain what we did. There are two separate sheets of acrylic. One, a very, well, a rather thick one um, at the, um, behind the piece. So the piece has been laced on cardboard and then we basically stuck it on this piece of acrylic, right? And then we, I found another one, a thinner one, very clear, so that obviously we can show the whole piece. And the way my aunt joined the two um, pieces of acrylic together is she found in her stuff, because she's like my mom, but with kind of hardware things. She's got everything. So anything we need, we can find at her place, which is crazy. So what we did is we, we took a, um, it's not a screw, it's a, oh, I don't know the word. Anyway, it's like a screw. And so we just basically screwed the two um, acrylic pieces together, but with a spacer here, so that obviously this one is not stuck to the um, cross-stitch piece. So it's interesting because it's as if it was kind of standing on its own, and it's obviously slightly transparent, so that whatever wall you're putting it on, you will see which is really nice in terms of, of, you know, of the effect that you will have once the piece is on the, hanging on the wall. So, oh God, I'm so happy with this. It's a little bit heavy. I'm, I'm probably going to put it down at some point. But so this is it. Let me just show you the back, um, just so you see how, what kind of thing we've put. So it's laced, and obviously I haven't protected, which is silly, but I haven't hidden my lace back, but it's, it's fine. And then you see... We actually screw this little tiny hanger thing on the acrylic, which we couldn't have done ha had it been glass, obviously. And so we tested it, it's sturdy enough, and so she can it, hang it right on her wall uh, when she's back home with this piece. So this is a present for my sister, fully finished, and I am so very happy. There you go. Let me just show you what it looks like there. You can see both pieces of acrylic with the um, piece in the middle. Oh, this is so good. There you go. Now, of course, 
I'm starting to freak out because I'm prob I'm pretty sure that every one of you have has had the feeling before where you you do something for someone and you're very happy with the result and then all of a sudden you've got like doubts creeping in your mind whether she's going to like it whether it's good enough whether the colors are okay for her whether so I'm starting to <laughs> I'm starting to freak out um like some days I would say, oh my God, she's not going to like it. And she's going to feel, you know, she's going to have to say that, thank you very much. I love it. But she might not. And oh, whatever. So it's it's, it's just screwing my mind. Sorry for the words, but it's just kind of, yeah, it's um, some days I wake up and I'm like, oh my goodness, what if? So we'll see. But I am happy with the result. And we had a blast with my aunt doing this. Um, it was... As always, when I'm with her and we do stuff, we had so much fun. It was so messy and we tried and we failed and we messed it up and it was really fun. And by the way, um, I, um, she's, she's, she's like, she's entered a frenzy of like fully finishing for me. So what I did yesterday, we spent um, the afternoon with two of my little tiny Shadow Lane squares. One is arabesque and the other one is, I think, tiny... I can't remember, tiny rose garden, I think. I'll show them to you when they're back. But anyway, so I, I, I took them to, to her place and we started thinking about what kind of framing we wanted, to, we wanted to do. So I've laced both of them on small squares of um, foam, foam board and she, it, it stayed with her. We uh, almost finished one of the frames and the other one we had an idea, but we, didn't, we needed time and, and materials. So these are with her. Uh, which is fine. At some point, I'll get them back, um, and and I'll be able to show them to you. But anyway, she had decided that stitchy stuff, just you know, lingering in in a basket, was not good enough, and so I had to take them to hers so that we could start finishing them. Which I love because she just motivates me to actually, you know, finish the things and then have either presents or things that I can hang on my wall and and this is such a lovely way to spend time with loved ones that I'm really appreciative. So we'll see what surprise um, I'll get when I next go to her place. So again, fully finished present for my sister, which is going to be gifted in 10 days time when, she's, um, when she comes to my place. So these are the finish, fully finishes. Um, now I also have two finished pieces. I'm going to start by the small one so that I can, you know, play with the suspense. So, um, as you may know, I'm stitching all 12 of the Garden Club Series patterns by uh, Blackbird Designs. And I've uh, very recently finished, last week I think, Garden Club number 11, um, the Fairy Garden. Um, and this one is one of my favorites because, of course, the tiny little house in the flower basket, which is completely crazy. Um, so this is Fairy Garden, Garden Club series number um, 11. And this is my finish. And I've, <laughs> I've put an M and an E. It's like barely legible, but that's fine. Um, and this is the tiny little house. I've stitched it with all the called for um, channel art threads. And this is a third piece I finished so far. Let me just show you the other two. Yeah, number one and number two. And here's number 11. Now, the reason why I stitched number 11 is because, and, and not number three in order, is because Dory Kay from North Carolina has mentioned in one of my previous videos that once she saw the pattern, she had to add it on her wish list. And, um, and I told her that I would be more than happy to send it over to her once I'm finished. So I'm finished. Dory, if, if you're watching this... So again, this is Dory Kay from, um, from North Carolina. Dory, if you're watching this, um, I'll leave my email address uh, in, in the description box so that you can just, you know, maybe um, drop me an email with your uh, actual physical address so that I can send this one mm -hmm. over to you. Um, so, so yeah, um, I'm happy with those. 
Now, I had a kind of a, I didn't know what to do next, which, which um, pattern to start next. So I, uh, I chose three and put them on Instagram asking for your advice. And let me just show you who won, basically. <laughs> um, I, I wanted to, I had stitched too much pink, basically. So Antique Rose is, is the, uh, the main pink in this pattern, but it's also in the, um, in the number one. And so the pinky stuff, I've had enough. So what I did is I picked three of the patterns that don't have that much pink. And then I took pictures and sent them on Instagram saying, what do you think? What should I start next? Et cetera, et cetera. And I have just barely, I'm not going to show because it's like three stitches, but I have chosen the next one. And the next one will be um, all in a row, which is number 12. Let me show it to you. It's in two parts. You've got baskets of flowers on the bottom part and then this beautiful little house and a, another flower and a bird on the upper part. And the reason why I chose this one, although, I mean, everybody made it his, their case and all the reasons for, for choosing any of the three was good, is I think it was Leah who put it this way. She said, whatever calls to you, obviously, but she says this one felt right season-wise because of the colors and, and because I had taken out all the pinkish pinky springy one so to speak I, I thought yeah she's right I, I it's, it looks like I need an autumn feel and, and some fall colors and so I decided that number 12 will be perfect perfectly appropriate for that so this is the one I'm um, that I will be stitching this I just have barely begun just for kicks so this is a finished garden club series number 11 now the other finish this one is a serious one um, as you may know I have been stitching coats of arms by Stickedine van der Wiehenburg as a gift for my boss um, my deadline was November 13 yeah November 13th uh, to get it to the framers so that I could gift it to him on his birthday on December 6th I am almost, yeah, I'm two weeks ahead of time, which is awesome. It's finished. Let me just show you the pattern first. Now, of course, it's not, I haven't stitched the full pattern. So I need to say this now. I mean, this is supposed to be 600 by 200 and I left out some of the banner. So let me show you the original pattern just so you see it full. So as you can see, it's made of banners and borders and there are seven banners and eight borders. So I, um, I obviously, I cropped it. It was too much for me to do. So I chose three of those banners and four borders. And so obviously it's much smaller than this. Um, I think it's, um, it's, it's, so it's still 200 stitches in width, but it's only, um, I think 270 in height. So this is the original pattern. Now let me show you my finished. I am so, so happy with this. Um, yeah, you're gonna see a silly smile on my face, but this is Coats of Arms by Stickadine from that behind blog. Oh my goodness. Can you see this? I'm gonna try and do something that you can actually see. So as you can see, there are three banner types with one with lions the other one with the unicorns and then the top one is maybe phoenixes or eagles or whatever and then interspersed between those banners are borders which I chose from the original chart and I've repeated the um, can you see the very top and, and bottom one these are the same just to kind of frame the piece so this is my finish. I'm going to try and do some close-ups just so you have an idea and I'll, I'll talk about what I've stitched this with. For those of you who wouldn't know, because I've been talking about this piece since March when I started it. I am so very happy. It's, it, it came out lovely. I mean, look at this. Oh God. 
I'm sorry, it's just... Ooh. All right, first off, I need to... I need to thank you all for all the support and encouragement and the cheering up that you did all those months. So again, I think I started it late March and I finished it a week ago. Um, but I want to say thank you to my number one, number one supporter, Annette, California Stitcher. You've been, in, you're, you've been around from the beginning and for each of my Instagram posts and my um, YouTube videos, You've been so enthusiastic about this piece that I have to dedicate this finish to you. So, so here it is again. So let me try and just show you some of the stuff I did and speak about what I've used. So the fabric is a very, very flimsy, very loose 25 count linen in, in an off-white cream sort of color. Um, and it, it was it, it's really soft, but it's also very flimsy and so the um, it is stitched one over one And so it was very easy to slip my thread under the actual fabric thread So that was tricky, but then I was um, stitching it on a hoop um, on a uh, small floor stand So, you know, it was okay once I got the gist of it And I mean, you know, you stitch this for eight months, you know how it goes at the end, right? So the very dark, it's a very dark green that you can see here in the borders and for example here in the central motif and here and there in those little tiny things and then again in, in this part here and all the tiny little stuff. This is a pearl cotton, a DMC pearl cotton number 12 in a very dark green color. So it's pretty thick which was kind of tricky on the, on this on this fine fabric one over one but it worked pretty well and then the second thread which is there's only one other thread and that's a Karen water lily silk in a Sierra colorway and again using one strand so and it's highly as you can see obviously highly highly variegated so everything that has yellow and green mixed together is this water lilies um, silk and you can't you can't see it on camera but the fact that I've used a, a very um, how do you say that very thin silk strand against a pearl cotton thicker pearl cotton makes it you know gives it texture and when you see it up close it, it, it really shows that it's not in the same level and that's one of the things that I really really like so I mean, oh, and I want to show you my signature, so I had to somehow put my signature on it. Something just fell. Um, here you go, a little mev in backstitch here that I just winged at the very end. Um, just so, you know, at least my name's on somewhere. So this is, again, the fully finished piece. I'm so happy with this. Um, so yeah. So the story behind this is um, my boss has a country home not very far from here and we do uh, sometimes uh, work from there. It's just like awesome. We just, you know, have this kind of country setting just a full day of work to, you know, be concentrated and not be bothered by calls and people and stuff. And in this home, he's got the, his living room is, is arranged and decor um, pretty much like a... Um, kind of a gentleman farmer's or a hunting cabin kind of style. Very, very British, very lush and, and cozy and stuff. And his, his, both his couches are covered in a, um, in a very dark green velvet fabric. And, and this dark green velvet fabric is exactly the color of this DMC Pro Cotton. So this is why both in the spirit and the colorways, I thought this piece would go well in his place. So this will go to the framers um, later this week. Um, and what I'm doing is I'm leaving it uh, with a framer that works with my local needle workshop so that I know this person knows how to deal with, you know, stitched pieces. She will do the lacing, she will do everything. So the only thing I need to do is give her the piece ironed and then she'll do the rest. So we'll see in terms of, you know, um, frame color and map boards and whatever, what I choose. I have no idea what I'm going to do, but we'll see when I get there. And then hopefully in, um, 
in three weeks time I'll be able to take pictures maybe a, a quick video just to show you guys uh, what it looks like before it's gifted um, so yeah that was my big finish um, for this month and I'm very very happy now because this is finished and just because um, I started a bunch of things. I'm going to go through my whips first, the ones that you have seen before, and then I'll show you the, uh, the starts. Um, so my first whip is uh, Midnight by Barbara Anna Designs. Uh, this one was recommended to me by Leah, and this is for my witchy aunt. So let me try and see if, can you see this? So the, the stitch piece obviously is a central thing. The finish is, is just fancy, but that's not how it's going to go. So this is a st stitch piece. It's a uh, quote from William Shakespeare taken out of Hamlet. Tis now the very witching time of night. With quirky little witches and a huge basket and a night scene with cats that have been redesigned to be owls and a little you know, little buildings and stuff. I really like the design and I was lucky enough to find a crazy fabric to stitch it on. And so here is where I'm at on this. Look at this. The fabric is a 32 count hand dyed by Tentaculum, which is a German company and the colorway of this fabric is Friedrich. Yeah, Friedrich, German. Um, I am. I have converted almost everything. It was charted for DMC, and I've converted almost everything in for over-dyed uh, gas tweak dye works, and I'm using one Soie de Paris from AVAS, which is the very, very almost white here. So here it is. <laughs> I've, I've started the blue yesterday, I think, and I love, I love it. It's, it's beautiful, and on this fabric, it just pops out just fine, and it adds to the grays and whites. And so, as you can see, the witches are taking, are starting to take shape here. Um, so the upper part, basically, just needs two crows, um, I think the uh, brooms, and then maybe another little motif, oh yeah, keys, and it'll be done. And then I can do the wording, and then the night scene, the little village um, in a starry night, which is, the ba which the background of which is this color here, blue, which I absolutely love. So this is Midnight by Barbara Anna Designs, and, and it's really, really nice. Now, I need to say something. This is stitch two over two, on so 28 30 count linen the crosses are too big it's a two over two on 20 30 count 28 30 count is too big for me i've i've come to enjoy very very much stitching tiny stitches i mean look at this so this oh by the way i didn't tell you this is an xju design uh, design fabric 28 count and it was fabric of the month I think for October maybe I can't remember but anyway see well obviously I mean tiny stitches versus big stitches and I know it's okay it's just that my liking goes to tiny stitches so this is very strange for me because it's two strands over two um, fabric threads and I feel like the you know, the crosses are too big. But again, had I stitched this one over one, I know that I would have lost all the details, which is silly because this is all about the tiny quirky little things that, that you know, are, are on the pattern. So it's fine, it's just, okay, now I know I love the one over one up to 32 count, which I did for present for my sister. Um, obviously I'm working with magnifiers, so it's ma it makes it really easy. Um, but anyway, I'm digressing. So this is the midnight work in progress. I have no set date. I'm thinking if I can do it by Christmas, this will be my Christmas gift to my genius crazy witchy aunt, which would be really fun. 
I have an idea for a finish, by the way, that was given to me by Audre Stitchy, sorry, Stitchy Witch 42. She recently showed a finish on Instagram using um, tapestry, what you call them? Is it tapestry nails or something? So it's basically just the fabric nailed with, with, with beautiful tapestry nails, big and antique looking, on a, on a board, on, on a wooden board that she had probably distressed or something. And I think that it would be perfect on this. So all I need to do is find a, a wooden, a piece of wood, basically a wooden board, and then maybe distress it or, or whatever, paint it, and then just um, nail the piece with those tapestry things on it and, and give it a really rustic kind of edgy looking look, sorry. Um, and I know that my obviously my mom has those tapestry nails. I don't know if that's what you call them So obviously it would be fairly easy for me to finish for for my aunt. So that may be um, a um, That may be a um, a Goal for me to stitch it finish it by Christmas which, which I I think is possible so that it'll be a Christmas gift for her So that was midnight now I'm sorry, I'm all over the place and I'm rambling a lot, but there's so many things I want to share, so there it goes. Um, as I told you in my last uh, update, I have started a Heaven and Earth Designs, which is completely crazy, but I did. Um, this design is called Be Present. The artwork is by Lisa Steinke, and this is what the full design looks like. It's a beautiful, I mean, the colors are just stunning. It's just a butterfly with some, I don't know, cool looking kind of motifs. And then the word here says, breathe. So this is the original design. Now, I'm not going to do everything because it's too, I mean, it, it's just too big for me. So what I decided is I would do only, I would stitch only the central part. So from here down to here and every area where it's like very, very clear colors, right here under the, the butterfly and down here where the word is, um, this will not be stitched either. So here's for a full coverage, which is not going to be a full coverage. And so I've chosen the fabric so that the background would go, hopefully, well with the other colors. So this is what it looks like. So obviously it's going to be much smaller in, in, in terms of counts than the original designs, right? Um, it's like, it's probably half in width and a third um, smaller in height. So for me, it, it sounds like more manageable. Yeah hopefully. And so this is, I haven't stitched much on it. And plus, I mean, I'm so slow and I have no idea what I'm doing. This makes me actually laugh when I stitch it because I have I have no idea what I'm doing. And so I've had this box with all the flosses. Oh, by the way, this is charted for 88 DMC colors, which is huge. And for the tiny start that I have probably already used, I don't know, maybe 20 colors or something. So what I do is I have this box full of threads and then I pick them, it takes me like five minutes to pick a thread and then I stitch two stitches and then I put it down and I pick another one. So it goes like, I don't know, it's a good two hours sitting, I do 20 stitches, I'm happy, but that's fine. I mean, there's absolutely no rush and I'm loving the process. And again, I mean, it, it, it makes me really, really happy and it makes me smile and laugh on my own silliness. So this is where I'm at so far. This is you, you know, the experts in haze are going to freak out probably, but that's fine. So as you can, this is a 25 count even weave, hand dyed by XJU Designs again. Um, that's a, uh, again, a fabric of the month, whether it be September, October, I can't remember, but it was perfect, I thought, for this piece. So. It's half stitches, one over one on 25 count, which obviously in terms of coverage is gonna be crappy, right? It's way done enough, but it's fine because I want the uh, fabric eventually to show up. I thought, you know what, I'm gonna do it that way and then we'll just see what it, you know, what it looks like. 
So this is what I'm, I've done, which is, I mean, you have no idea what I've done here, but that's fine. Again, let me just try and do a very, yeah, a close up. So you see the coverage is not perfect, far from it, but that's because one over one, 10 stitch on 25 count is just not enough. But that's the way I chose to do it. And I just want to try and show you where this part is. So I've started by the very top. So basically I've done those two little dark sort of berries or circles or what have you. So this is what I've done. So basically this is a 30 by 30 stitch square and I'm not even finished yet. But I'm really having fun with this. It's, it's awesome. It's really, really cool. So this is heaven and earth design because, oh well, if you gotta go crazy, you might, you might as well go fully crazy. So this is it. Now, this is actually pretty good, 40 minutes in. All right, um, now I need to show you my two starts. And I know that those of you following me on Instagram have, have actually seen one of them. Um, as you may know, uh, a, a month ago, I, uh, I took a, a four or five day break and I went to spend a, a bit of time in Provence in the hill parts of Provence, not by the sea. A, a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful area where I hadn't been since the early 90s, so it's, it had been a while. And this is where I, um, I actually celebrated my 18th birthday back in the day. So it had special memories. And it was all the more special that for two of those five days, um, my lovely partner um, was able to, um, you know, to to spend two days with me uh, and so and and this is an area where we used to know each other when I was he was my high school sweetheart basically um, and so 26 odd years ago and so he came and we spent those 48 hours together just you know visiting back the places that we used to go to when we were um, uh, late teens uh, so it, it was a very very special time and once he left, I had three days, and as Annette um, called it, my own, um, my very own stitchy retreat, where I took everything that I had kitted up and and just decided to start whatever struck my fancy, which is what I did. And I had a blast, you know, either visiting and then coming back to stitch, or the other way around, and it was um, it was just wonderful. All this to say that I have started. A chatelaine. Yeah, because a hate is not enough. Um, I also had to start a chatelaine and then I'll show you the other one. And I mean, every, the only thing I'm missing basically is the Mirabilia, right? But that's not going to happen anytime soon, she says. So the chatelaine that I have started, I haven't seen it much. Uh, what I'm going to show you is is the pattern, but it's, it's I mean, it's, it's just so small in comparison to the actual size of the piece that I, I don't think you'll see anything. I am probably going to try and insert uh, a picture of the uh, of the pattern as you can find it on, on uh, Martina's website, um, but I have not seen it stitched or only one and not in the um, called for colorway, so it's going to be difficult for you to, you know, to get a clear picture of what it gonna what it's gonna look like, but again, so this is basically what. The, sorry, um, it's called the graceful sampler, and so this is. Yeah, I have no idea whether you understand what. And again, something falling. Um, so this is the pattern, as you can see. I mean, there's no danger of someone trying to steal it. I think so. Some square diag um, diamond motifs here and at the bottom and then there's a quote from Abraham Lincoln which is which is really beautiful it says he has a right to criticize who has a heart to help and there's Martina's name and then the date she stitched it and I will change this cartouche here with um, a quote from I think um, something that my um, beloved partner wrote to me um, this is still 
being determined. But anyway, so I will change the quote. I will obviously not put my name in full. I just wanted you to see the alphabet. This is a gothic alphabet. It's just like the most crazy beautiful alphabet I've ever seen. Um, and, um, and so everything, I mean, everything took me on this one. There's so many different stitches as only Martina knows how to do. And the alphabet is stitch one over one, where all the rest is, is, is two over two. So that was also very appealing to me. And the very last thing is it is charged to go on a very, very dark fabric, which I love. So without further ado, let me show you what I've done so far. I've worked on the top part of the piece. I need to put something behind this fabric. Um, this is a, hmm, I don't know. This is either a 28 or a 32 count linen, a beautiful dark gray kind of slate. And this is what I've done so far. So let me try and show you the colors and the stitches. So you see this first, okay, this is tricky. This first thing here is, for now, in here, I've done only the cross stitch. There will be uh, beads and also some black work, a very fine, very delicate, bla delicate black work around this. And can you see this here? I've started the half, those are half stitches, one over one. And then these are full crosses, two over, one over two, two over two. Can you, yeah, the colors are gonna be very washed out. I'm gonna try and show you the silks I'm using for this. And there is my first Petite Treasure Braid stitches. Um, there are two different ones. So this is my start on Graceful Slam Sampler, sorry, by Chatelaine. Yeah, this is probably closer to the correct colorway. Let me try and show you the silks that I've chosen. So I think everything I've done is in silks. I encourage you maybe to go check my Instagram because I've, I've done some close-up pictures and I think the, uh, the colors are more accurate. Now I just wanted to show you, so this piece is going to be for me. So this is not going to be a gift, this is going to be for me. And let me just show you something. Can you see this wall here, dark gray wall? Well I think it's going to be perfect. Whatever kind of framing I do, this piece is going to be just awesome on this wall. So this is definitely for me, um, which I know are going to make some of you happy. <laughs> So um, so let me sh show you some of the silks. So the, the, the color range is, is very pale to be, you know, to pop out on, on, on the dark fabric. It's charted to be on black even. Now I had this piece in, of, of beautiful gray, so it was obvious for me I would do it on, on, that, on that piece. Um, it's, it's blues, mostly different, very different kind of blues. And then there are one or two more neutrals stuff. And then, yeah, so, and then, and, and, and a very light green. So these are both Tentaculum silks. Can you see one is very light green, the, one, the other one is in the grays. This one I'm gonna use to stitch the, um, the Gothic alphabet one over one, and it's, I'm sure it's gonna be gorgeous. Now here are the other threads. All right, let me see. So Gloriana's, Dinky Dyes, Atalisoa, the whole shebang, water lilies, with again, some tropical blues and then some very icy blue and then a very pale, more of a, I don't know, like winter sky blue. And then these, this one here, this is a Gloriana, that, that's, that one was called for this is gilded pink, so this has more of a pinkish, creamy look. It's difficult for me to show you. Um, again, I will put more photos, I think, on Instagram, because I think it's easier to see this. And as always with Chatelaine Designs, everything's about the mix of colors, but also the different stitches. And and I really think that, especially the black, the, the yeah, the black work, I guess, 
is going to be stunning on this. It has like tin, tiny little arabesques, like filigrees around the motifs, and I think it's going to be gorgeous. And again, this alphabet is killing me. So, um, so yeah, I'm very happy. This is a big piece. Again, I find that the two over two stitches are a little bit too big for my own taste, but because the alphabet is one over one, obviously I had to, I had to choose a fabric on which I could do the one over one. Yeah, this gives maybe a little bit more. It's a little bit more accurate in in terms of colors. Yeah, but the camera is doing whatever it wants, right? So I am happy with this. I'm really happy. Um, I will probably, I don't know. I don't know when I'm going to take it up because I'm being a little bit obsessed by Midnight by Barbara Anna Designs. All right, this is, bear with me guys, this is the last one. I had said that once Coats of Arms was finished, I would start another BAP. I mean, at least for me it's a BAP. Uh, and that one we all know, and a lot of us love it. It is Dragons of Sumatra by Ink Circles. So this one, I think, is being stitched all over the world, and it's beautiful. And so I think it was the same day, or maybe the day following. Anyway, I put down coats of arms, I immediately started Dragons of Sumatra and I had I had shown that maybe in my previous or the, the one before what I wanted to do in terms of colors and so I knew exactly what I had to do and so I started it straight away. So let me just show you again. This is the pattern. This is big. This is 300 by 200 and it's got a lot of stitches so it's big. It's going to take a while. and. This is, I'm just like a, a child at Christmas. Um, this is my start. So, all right, put some sunglasses on people. Do I need to put something behind it? Yes, I probably do. This is my start on my tiny little start on Dragons of Sumatra. Oh God, the, the color of this fabric is just not showing well. It's so much brighter. It's like an awesome yellow orangey with splotches of greens and blues and craziness. Yeah, it doesn't do it justice. Let me just go back. I don't know if you can see. No, no. I'll, I'll, again, I mean, I'll take some pictures and put them on Instagram because this is not doing the color justice. Anyway, this... So this fabric is uh, from the same company as the uh, the piece I'm, uh, I'm I'm stitching Midnight on. So this is Tentaculum. Colorway is Klimt. And I want to say hi to Megan here. Um, she knows why. So the colorway of the fabric is Klimt. Okay. And I'm stitching this with the most fabulous thread on earth. This is also by Tentaculum. This is a hand-dyed Ouvert à soi, soit d'Alger, in a colorway waterhouse, and it's a slightly variegated dark blue with with hints of kind of teal in it. So this is the silk. I'm gonna try and show you my stitches, my start. Oh, I wish it would show. Prop. Oh god, this is green. Horrible. And I'm green and everything's green. Alright, let's try and have the camera go back on its feet. Alright, we're back. Alright, unfortunately I can't do something close up, otherwise it's going to screw the whole color. Can you see the slight variegation on this? I mean, this motif here is already perfect. This kind of leafy arabesque motif is is already beautiful and and that's just like a fraction of the whole thing um it's it's going to be gorgeous it's going to be gorgeous now i need to to talk about the process 
So this one, as coats of arms, I am stitching on a hoop, as you can see, and it's on a tiny little floor um, stand. And because the fabric is light, and, and this is linen, but it's, it's actually very even, um, and, and it holds itself really, really well. So with the right tension on the hoop, I can stitch this with artificial light at night. It's stitched, obviously, one over one. So this is, again, originally a 28 count, but because of the dyeing process, it's probably more of a 30 count. Stitch one over one. I'm, I'm using a magnifier, so it's, it's really, honestly, very easy to stitch. And the process of it is just like an out of this world experience. I mean, the silk is not very soft. It's it's rather l tiny, little bit scratchy, which is awesome because it it just holds to the fabric perfectly. It's it's really easy to to, to stitch. But but the silk is like when you have electric light, artificial light on it, it literally sparkles. I mean. Sometimes I just catch myself staring at it in the middle of a stitch. It's just so striking and so beautiful. It's just such, I have to say this, it's just such a sensual, sensual, yes, S-E-N-S-U-A-L experience. To stitch this is crazy. It, it, I don't know, I don't, I don't know why, because of the fabric, because of the silk, Maybe also because of the uh, of of the uh, the motifs and their curves and I've been completely obsessed for the last four days by this piece and so I stitch it when after dinner when I get home in 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 the weekdays and then on weekends what I do is I wait for the uh, sun to set which is very early now. We've changed time. I think you guys in the U.S. are doing that this weekend. We did it last weekend. So basically, here in Paris, 5.30, it's already almost night time, which, is, which sucks, but that's what it is. And so anyway, so when the sun sets, I can start, you know, working on this, and I'm having a blast. It's incredible. It's just incredible to stitch on. Um... So this one is going to be my night focus, I guess. Um, I have no idea what this is going to be, who it's going to be for. This is just, I mean, I just love the pattern. I'm so very happy with the fabric and the threads that I found. So this one is really a process um, stitching for the sheer pleasure of, I can't, I'm stroking the fabric. This is crazy. Anyway. So, um, so again, this is Dragons of Sumatra. Oh, and I, I forgot to show you. Look at my first needle minder. This is this was part of Leah's beautiful little package. This is my first needle minder, and I'm so very happy. It's three different types of metal um, stuck together in the, in this lovely motif that the heart is upside down. Sorry, um, and I hadn't had one yet. And it's perfect. And so, again, Leah, thank you. We love it. Um, all right, I'm going to have to start, stop rambling here. There's one life, last thing I wanted to talk about, um, hopefully very briefly. I've had a um, eyesight or vid vision incident the other day. I was at work, came back from lunch, and then all of a sudden I couldn't, well, there, I was impaired, like it, I had a some kind of a curve in my vision where everything got blurred so that depending on how I was looking at my keyboard, for instance, I couldn't see some of the letters on my keyboard. Same thing on the screen, there were parts of, of the screen that I actually couldn't see. It kind of freaked me out, obviously. Um, and so I had to lie down for 10-15 minutes and see whether you know it would recess and it did um, and I thought you know like no pain no ache no headache no whatever um, and, and then it just came all of a sudden and then it, it, it went as it had come so I'm I'm putting this on you know a stress kinda thing um, 
But I freaked out because obviously, I mean, it is so not cool not to see, right? But with stitching, which is, you know, a huge part of my life today, I'm, I was thinking with this going on, I can obviously not stitch. So here's the thing, my, both my aunt and my boss kind of, you know, chided me saying, Marie, if you're, if you're spending whatever, 10, 11 hours on a screen at work, and then another three hours in the evening stitching, maybe you, you are fatiguing your eyes in some way that, can, that may explain what, hap what just happened to you. And so I have a question for you, um, lovely people out there. I'm not stitching like completely crazy 15 hours a day, obviously. Um, but I can be stitching maybe seven, seven hours in a day on weekends. And so I just have a question. Do you, do you experience, well, I have two questions. Do you experience such kind of fatigues in your eyes? And if you do, do you happen to have any kind of tricks or exercises that you do to just kind of relax your eyes? Um, or make your eye muscles work in different ways just to, you know, take a break. Just like, you know, yoga movements or stretch, stretching movements when you're stitching just to, you know, relax your muscles and everything. Do you have any kind of tricks for, for eyesight, for vision or for eye muscles um, that you know of or that you actually practice? I'm curious because I think I should definitely, just as I, you know, can stand up every two hours to do some stretches. I think it's important for me if I want to keep on stitching to uh, to kind of be you know careful with my eyes because it was kind of freaky. It didn't last long again, 20, 25 minutes, but still it was kind of freaky. So so there it is. Um, if you have any ideas, any links to you know again some some exercises, some practices that you you guys know are helpful or you yourself use. Um, I'd be very curious to um, to take a look, uh, and very grateful for you to if you could share them. Um, so this is it. I guess uh, it's a little bit of an abrupt ending, but um, I just want to say again. So the stitching itself is extremely rewarding, relaxing, enjoyable. But it also calls for so many exchanges with you, lovely people, all over the place. Some some heartfelt, you know, thank yous and encouragements, and 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 just hey, I I like what you do, and I recognize what it means, and I would have never thought of doing this that way, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So it just connects me to wonderful people that know what I'm talking about. That's a second thing. And then the third thing is, because of all this stitching that I'm doing, I'm also spending time with wonderful people such as my mother, my aunts, to actually finish and make things. And I think that the time we spend actually crafting things with others is some incredibly precious time. And Okay, I'm sorry. And so, this is this is all um, in big part um, thanks to who uh, me taking back cross stitch and you guys just encourage me all the time. So I'm going to start here, stop here. This is ridiculous, but anyway, thank you very much. Um, and until I see you next time, stitch well, be kind, au revoir.